So to begin making our strap clamps, the first thing we have to do once we've deburred the piece um, and rough cut them to size, is we need to figure out a way to clamp it. So we're going to just use a vise in this case to clamp it. That's going to be the easiest method. There are a variety of vices out there. Um, this is one that, that Sherline sells. There are other people, other manufacturers that make vice very similar to this. Some of them costing four, five, six times as much as, as uh, the Sherline does. So it, it's a decent little advice. A lot of people complain about the cost of it, but um, vices usually are not super cheap if they're accurate. We'll take a look at the construction quickly of the vise and mainly what's going on down here in the bottom. Now in the bottom we have these notches and we have a small cam. The idea here is that we can slide the jaw back and forth and then we engage that cam at one point. If we want to go to a wider distance we move the cam down. One thing to keep in mind is that we want to try to keep this pull angle as close to 45 degrees as we can. We don't want to be pulling straight down, so we don't want to attempt to put the cam directly below the vice jaws in such a manner as, as this. The, the reason for that is at that point we're just pulling down. We're not actually getting hardly any clamping force. By keeping it at a 45 degree angle, we're going to be pulling uh, clamping. We're going to get our clamping force that we want as well as some downward force. Vice comes with a clamp kit, and this clamp kit consists of um, two L brackets, a T nut, and a cap head screw. So we simply slide that T nut in like so. Put our vise on, and the vise has around its perimeter a clamping groove. So we can hold the vise in this manner or we can hold the vise in this manner. Um, and we're going to try to go square. So put one clamp on and snug it down. Doesn't need to be super tight. Next we take our square and we line it up with the side of the vise. And we can tighten that down a little bit more. Then we take our second clamp move it into position and tighten it down. Now a note on T-nuts. So T-nuts come in uh, different sizes and types. We're actually going to end up making some of these in a later video as well. Uh, and you can either use a cap head screw as we're doing here or a piece of threaded rod. A couple of, of notes with T-nuts. We don't want to take these into place and then tighten them down to where we're biting into the bottom of the T. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is that if we were to tighten this up quite a bit, this screw quite a bit, we could actually end up pulling the T nut up through the T slot and damaging the top of our table here. That's again something we want to avoid. With the Sherline being aluminum and we've got fairly small clearances here, it may not take a lot of force to do that. Um, I don't want to damage my table to, to find out how much force it does take. But this is also a problem even on, on much larger mills uh, which have cast iron tables as you can pull the T-nuts up through those. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to end up making a few more of these to help distribute that force a little bit better and, and to give us some other options. But don't overly tighten these. You don't need to become a gorilla and really crank on them. Just snug them up. Now at this point we have a rough alignment. We could, if we wanted to, put a, a dial indicator across the back of here and fine tune that alignment. For the work we're doing today though, we don't need to do that. It's not going to matter. So next up, we put our piece in the jaws. Now what you'll see here is that this piece is almost level. Um, some of our thinner pieces that we'll be working with that I've cut because they're all a little bit different will actually drop below the jaws. We've got a, a little bit of a problem here in that we can't really cut to the edge without damaging or cutting into the face of our jaw, which we want to avoid. So the answer and the way that we solve this is with what are known as parallels. Now parallels will come in different heights. 
They will come in matched pairs. They are um, precision machined and ground typically to very tight tolerances over the length of them so they can be used as a measuring device. They're in pairs because they should be matched pairs. This will allow us to lift our workpiece off of the base of the vise. Something you should do is make sure you're clean. We don't want any specks of dirt or anything down in there because that will affect our alignment. You can use either a brush or compressed air, whichever you prefer or have available. We put our parallels down in the bottom on either side, pressing up against either jaw. And then we can set our workpiece down in there. Now you can see we're, we're not at any sort of risk of cutting into the jaws of our vise. Now the opposite of this would be trying to set this up high. Here we don't have as much gripping surface, so we want to avoid this. Um, also, I mean, this piece is, is fairly thick, but if we we're dealing with a thinner piece, it's going to flex a lot more. So set, it, set your workpiece as low as you can, within reason, into the jaws of the vise. Now parallels do come in different heights, so here are some taller ones versus what we're using in there. They'll usually come in sets of five or six pairs of parallels. The only place I've found to, to buy these small parallels is directly from Sherline. A typical parallel will be uh, much larger and way, way too large for, for this type of vise. Um, but to give you an idea, that's what they look like. And these can be handy for a lot of other things. So even having a full-size set of parallels is useful. So now we're going to snug it in there, not super tight yet. And it's useful to tap the workpiece a couple of times to help set it down in there a little bit further. Now this is a little bit tough. I'm actually probably going to um, make a, a brass hammer just for this purpose. Just because the clearances in here are really tight since we are dealing with a mini machine. We also want to make sure, I didn't uh, mention it specifically, but we do want to wipe down our parallels. And if we end up damaging these and getting any nicks or dents, um, that can definitely affect the quality of our work. So we may need to end up replacing the parallels. So that's the basics of using a vise along with the parallels. Next up, we'll start doing some cutting after we select a cutter. That'll be in the following video, just to keep these short and to a unique topic.